Hello, and welcome to the Reselling Report for today, Thursday, April 16th, 2020. I'm your host, Ann Eckhart, and every weekday morning, I upload the Reselling Report here to YouTube to update you on the day's retail and e-commerce news, including the latest from eBay, Amazon, Etsy, Mercari, and Poshmark. If you haven't done so already, I hope you'll subscribe. And now let's get on with today's show. Hey, it's almost the weekend. Who's excited for the weekend? Oh, wait, it's going to look like every other day now? Yeah, yeah, typical. (laughs) Yes, we are. We have made it to Thursday. What is this, the fifth or sixth weeks now of most stay-at-home orders? I've lost track. It's it. If I can remember the month, that's a good day. I do want to update you guys, uh, those of you who are waiting for your stimulus checks to hit your um, bank account or you're not sure if you are going to get a direct deposit, the IRS has the page up now where you can uh, track your stimulus payment. And if you need to update direct deposit information, you can do that there. So I will link that web portal below. Um, My dad got his check. Now I do think he maybe was one of the first because he gets social security So he's in the system already to always get a payment every month. So I wonder if that's why he got his so fast. Mine hasn't shown up yet. His came and it was like a two-day processing. You know, it was pending, but mine hasn't come through at all. But I do think he probably got his fast because of Social Security. But this new web portal is available uh, for you to access if you want to go on and double check. Also, self-employment, unemployment claims can now be made, I believe, in most states. I will, again, put the link to that portal below so you can access your state's unemployment site, whether you file for full or partial. Now, I am going to go and try to file partial. I still am, of course, making money, but my YouTube money is way down and my book income is way down. And I'm going to get to the point with eBay where I don't have anything more to list and liquidation sources are kind of starting to dry up. I noticed that on bulk.com, suddenly things are just selling out super fast. People are grabbing up whatever they can get, which I do want to warn you if you are on a site like bulk that frequently discounts their items, you go in straight away and buy a box at full price, your margins are going to be even tighter than they would be even if you get a discount. I don't buy from bulk unless I can get it for 60% off or more. So they put their lots up and then they start discounting them. The margins are super, super tight. So that is just my personal advice and help to you guys if you are looking at a site that discounts their lots. And some of the uh, liquidators do do that and bulk is one. Just be very cautious of just grabbing up anything. Um, Your margins may not be there. Also reminder that you're not going to probably be able to sell everything you get in a lot online. And there will be items that are damaged, even if you buy new. That's just the nature of liquidation. So you want to take those things into consideration before uh, you invest in liquidation. So before I jump into the news for the day, I do want to address something that I've seen in the comments, and that's people questioning the sites that I'm using to report the stories. Um, You know, some people don't like this site, some people don't like that based on political beliefs. I'm not making this a political show. When I'm researching the news for the day, I am looking at all sites. And when I choose which site to mention, uh, it's usually because it was the site that just was at the top of search and it was the site that was most accessible. Sometimes the stories are on sites that you need a subscription to, to access, and I don't have that. But Almost always when I report a story, it's on multiple websites and I'm just picking the one that is maybe the most widely known, the most easily or the easily easiest to access. So I'm not making political statements. I look at all the sites um, in order to share with you guys. As always, you need to do your own research. And you know, if you don't trust the story from one site, you know, go to another one and look it up for yourself. But with that, I am now going to get into a story of the U.S. retail sales. Now, this story is on CNN Business, although, again, it's on many sites. 
This was just the one I decided to reference, but the same info is available everywhere. Uh, U.S. retail sales plunged 8.7% in March, which is the deepest drop on record. According to the story, Americans aren't buying much beyond food right now, and that's devastating huge swaths of the retail industry. U.S. retail sales slumped 8.7% in March, their worst monthly decline on record in the data available from the Census Bureau, which dates back to 1992. Excluding autos and gas, retail sales fell by 3.1%. While retail trade fell overall, one category stood out. Grocery store sales surged 26.7% in March, and sales at non-store retailers, a category that would include e-commerce sites like Amazon, increased 3.1%. But sales at clothing and accessory stores plunged 50.5% in March. Sales at furniture and home furnishing stores declined 26.8%. Sales at sporting goods stores fell 23.3%. And electronics and appliance sales declined 15.1%. Except for grocery stores and other essential retailers, companies have shuttered stores and furloughed or laid off workers. Consumers have also pulled back their spending on discretionary items. That combination led to the steep drop in retail sales. And I think it's really important here to know that those were March numbers. In March, things were still open. April, when we get our April numbers in May, that's when we're really going to see the effect of this because April, almost everything has been shut down uh, other than essentials and you know restaurants for takeout. But most retail has been, will be closed all of April. So I can expect the April numbers to be even worse. But for those of us who do sell online and have an e-commerce business established, you know, from what I'm hearing, sales are steady. People are even seeing growth in their sales. So just as a reseller, we're in one of those very, very, very unique positions and one we should be grateful for that our retail business was already ready to deal with the increased demand of people online shopping versus a lot of brick and mortar stores that still to this day don't have an e-commerce presence. Turning now to eBay and Amazon, according to an article over on the e-commerce bites blog, eBay and Amazon have extended return policies uh, and their effect on sellers. eBay, Amazon, and retailers are extending their return policies as the coronavirus pandemic makes it more challenging for customers to make returns. But for sellers on online marketplaces, it means an extra burden and an unwelcome time. Even at the best of times, returns are difficult for marketplace sellers who often feel they have little control over the process and question whether the sites do enough to screen out chronic abusers. eBay announced its extended return policy on Tuesday and wrote, We're giving you and your buyers more time to complete returns during these unprecedented times. The extended timeline gives buyers more time to contact a carrier to pick up an item, ask for outside help to get it to the post office. We're also giving you extra time to pick up a returned item, inspect the item, and issue a refund. The outline of eBay's temporary returns and eBay money back guarantee policy changes are as follows. Buyers, we have increased the number of business days you have to ship a return back from 21 business days starting the moment you accept a return request and the buyer receives a return label. Sellers, we have increased the number of business days you have to issue a refund to five business days. Starting on the date the shipment tracking confirms the item was delivered back to you. The extended timelines apply to returns opened on or after May tw- March 25th, 2020 until further noticed. Meanwhile, Amazon announced it was updating its return policy giving our customers more time to return items. We've temporarily extending return windows in light of the ongoing global health crisis. Most items ordered through Amazon or seller partners in the U.S. and Canada between March 1st and April 30th can now be returned until May 31st. Items ordered through Amazon or seller partners in Italy, Spain, France, Turkey, and the Netherlands between February 15th and April 30th can now be returned until May 31st. Um, Lauren Thomas took a look yesterday at how returns are impacting the broader retail market in an article over on CNBC and raised a concern about returned inventory. The crisis also raises the question of what companies will be doing with all the returned merchandise after this pandemic passes. It might not be as easy to resell certain items that have been handled by other customers. Extra precautions will likely need to be taken, knowing that the coronavirus can last for days on surfaces, 
according to one study. Now, I personally stopped accepting returns about a year or so ago. I'd always accepted them. Granted, for most years, I sold vintage items, which very rarely get returned. But once I started into clothing, um, health and beauty started adding those items in, those things can just get returned so easily. And when you provide good photos, you accurately describe the item, you include measurements, uh, unless there's an actual defect with the item, then there's no reason a seller uh, should have to accept a return, in my opinion, unless that's part of your business model. I'm too small to handle returns, especially if the customer is paid through PayPal. Um, you know, there's the fees, everything involved that you don't get back. So yeah, I don't accept returns. And if you do, you might want to consider, is this the time to maybe turn returns off? Let me know what you think. Do you accept returns? Um, if so, or if not, why? Sticking with Amazon, uh, Amazon to suspend operations in France over coronavirus dispute. Uh, the move follows a French court order for the U.S. retailer to limit deliveries to essential goods amid controversy over virus safety measures. So this is a story that is, again, on multiple sources. I'm currently looking at it over on the New York Times. Um, Amazon said Wednesday that it would temporarily halt its operations in France after a court ruled the company had failed to adequately protect warehouse workers against the threat of the coronavirus and that it must restrict deliveries to only food, hygiene, and medical products until it addressed the issue. Amazon contested the findings of the ruling handed down Tuesday by a civil court outside of Paris and said it would appeal. The court had given the company a deadline of Wednesday evening to carry out the order or face a fine of 1 million euros. We have suspended activities in our distribution centers in France, despite the huge investment we have made to ensure and strengthen safety measures for our employees, Amazon said in a statement, adding it was perplexed by the court's decision. The threatened fine was too steep to risk not complying, Amazon added. The company lashed out at unions that had brought the court case, despite what it said was concrete evidence that had worked to strengthen safety measures at its six mammoth warehouses around France. The ruling is likely to have consequences for many people in our country, including thousands of employees, Amazon customers, French businesses that make sales on Amazon's platform. Lauren Deguse, a representative of the SUD Commerce, the main union that filed the lawsuit, said the alert at Amazon was expected to halt its French operations um, on Thursday for five days to enhance safety measures and provide its 10,000 workers full pay during that time. So this is interesting if something like this could happen in America. There have been a lot of stories and complaints about workers uh, who say the company is not doing enough to protect them in the Amazon warehouses. Uh, France has taken action. So will be interesting to see if uh, the U.S. Uh, warehouses end up being affected. Of course, it would have to be some sort of lawsuit being brought, I'm sure, to make them do anything, but something to watch now that we've seen one country um, do this for Amazon. Let's turn to some lighter reselling stories, shall we? According to an article on page 6.com, Tiger King, Joe Exotic's pink sequin shirt hits eBay for $650. Have you watched Tiger King? I've watched it and wow, I, I don't know how to unwatch that in my mind. Uh, one of Tiger King stars Joe Exotic's signature shirts can now be yours at a starting bid of $650. An eBay seller told TMZ he snagged a sparkly top a few weeks ago for just $100 when the Greater Wynwood Exotic Animal Part, uh, Exotic's former stomping grounds, sold a handful of his old belongings on Facebook. Now he's attempting to turn a pretty profit. The long sleeved fuchsia style can be spotted on Exotic in the second episode of Netflix smash hit docuseries. According to the seller, it was purchased directly from Jeff Lowe and was left over from when J Joe left the zoo. The shirt is guaranteed authentic and is a very rare piece. Get it while you can before Carol Baskin does. The listing included referring to the incarcerated zookeeper's longtime nemesis. And then it shows a screenshot of the Facebook post that was originally up selling uh, these items. So interesting. Would you want anything from anyone who was on the Tiger King show? Like, yeah, not me, but we'll see what it sells for. If you are not interested in a Tiger King shirt, uh, maybe you're interested in a Dr. Fauci coffee mug 
or some Andrew Cuomo socks? Uh, if so, head on over to Etsy where I, Andrew Cuomo, who's the governor of New York and Dr. Fauci, items are in uh, abundance. We've got mugs, t-shirts, buttons, socks, candle, uh, all kinds of items for both Dr. Fauci and Chris Cuomo. So that is my question to you. If you had to choose between Governor Cuomo or Dr. Fauci, which item would you go with? Now, I'm on team Dr. Fauci. I'm not saying anything against Andrew Cuomo, but I I love Dr. Fauci. I'm thinking as I look on Etsy here, I like the wash your hands mug. We've also got socks with his face all over them. Um, Yeah, lots of different. We've got a honk for Dr. Fauci um, button or I'm sorry, sticker. And uh, yeah, we've got lots of the same items also available for uh, Governor Cuomo. So are you a Governor Cuomo or a Dr. Fauci merchandise fan? Leave me a comment below. And finally, today I always like to share when I find a story about a reseller online and on azfamily.com, which I'm assuming is an Arizona, yes, Arizona news station. Uh, They have an article entitled Shopper Side Hustle, Selling Your Clothes on Poshmark. Cluttered closet, empty wallet, this may be the answer. While you stay at home for safety, you might want to consider cleaning out your closet and seeing if you can make some cash in the online retail market at the same time. Lily Bushnell is a 21-year-old student who does this year-round, selling on Poshmark under the name currently Lily. She says she earns thousands selling graphic t-shirts, tops, shoes, and more. Her advice is to make sure your posts stand out. Think about it from the perspective of buyer when you're listing something. How would you search to find it? Think Western, floral, lace, v-neck. You need to be sure you're really describing the item so the shopper can find it rather than just saying, oh, cute shirt, I don't want anymore. Uh, Poshmark shared information about the safety of shipping and receiving packages during COVID-19 over on their blog, and then it has a link to the Poshmark app. So it's always fun to see a little story online regarding reselling, and certainly you don't have to be a full-time reseller to utilize the reselling sites. Poshmark is a very easy site to start on. eBay, Mercari, Etsy, uh, they're all relatively easy to get started on, but probably Poshmark is the easiest if you are looking to move clothes, shoes, and accessories. And that is a wrap on today's show. If you liked it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave me your questions and comments. Also check out the show notes below the video for links to the articles I referenced. Thanks so much for listening. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye.